Hey, uh, so today I'm going to explain the checked property in JavaScript. The checked property determines the checked state of an HTML checkbox or a radio button element. By examining this property, we can determine if a checkbox is checked or a radio button is selected. In this program, if I were to not select any of these buttons, we have a different result. Within our HTML file, we will create an input element, the type is going to equal checkbox. Then for the ID, I will set this equal to my check box. And here is our checkbox. We should probably add a label so that people know what this is for. So the label, I will set the for attribute to be my checkbox. What's the label gonna say? Let's say subscribe, like a subscribe button. Utilizing the for attribute, if the for attribute is the same as the ID, when we click on the label, it should still select the checkbox. All right, let's add a break. Then we will create some radio buttons. We will again need an input element. The type this time will not be a checkbox, it will be radio. For the ID, this will be a vsub button. I'm going to abbreviate button to btn, so pay attention to that. Then I will create a label for this radio button. We will set the for attribute to be the same as the ID. Then the text will be visa. I'm going to add a break. Okay, let's copy this radio button, paste it two times. We'll change the second visa to be MasterCard. Let's change the ID first. MasterCard. Let's copy the ID, paste it within the for attribute of the second label. Then change the text. MasterCard. Then the third ID will be PayPal button, then change the for attribute and the text, pay pal. So with radio buttons, they should all be within the same group. Currently they're not, so I can select all of them if I would like. We should only be able to select one from any group. We will group these radio buttons by their name attribute. They should all have the same name. The name, let's say, is card. So let's copy this attribute and paste it within the other input elements. Now we should only be able to select one, and that appears to work. Lastly, let's create a submit button. We are creating a button. The text will be submit. The type is submit. And for the ID, the ID will be my submit. I will create a paragraph element. We'll populate it with some text, depending if subscribe is checked or not. Same thing goes with our radio buttons. I will create two paragraphs after our button, the ID on the first paragraph. Let's name sub result. There will be no text content to begin with. We'll change the text content of our sub result paragraph with some text that states if the user is subscribed or not. We'll create another paragraph for the radio buttons. Again, there's going to be no text content. I'll set the ID of this paragraph to be payment result. Now before we move to our JavaScript file, I'm just going to edit the CSS on the button to make it a little bit bigger so you guys can read it. So the ID of that button was my submit. We are selecting an ID, my submit. I will set the font size to be 1EM. And that's probably good enough. Uh, maybe I'll add one more break after the subscribe button and the PayPal radio button. Just so that it's not as cramped. That's decent enough. Okay, so be sure to save your CSS file, your HTML file. Then we are now within our JavaScript file. What we're going to do now is get these elements by their ID and store them within constants so they're easier to work with. Okay, let's start with our checkbox. So the checkbox had an ID of my checkbox. Const my checkbox. Be sure to pay attention to the capitalization. 
Feel free to change that if you would like, just be sure it's consistent with what you have currently with your HTML elements. We are accessing the document of our web page, get element by ID. The ID is going to be my checkbox. And that's it. So let's get the other elements. We have my checkbox. Then we have our visa button. Const visa button, get element by ID, visa button. Then let's repeat this with our MasterCard button. Again, pay attention to the capitalization. It's pretty important. Then we have our PayPal button. We need our submit button next. My submit. Then our paragraph elements. Sub result. Then payment result. All right, here are all the constants that we'll need. So when we click on the submit button, we will execute a function. So we are taking my submit, that's the name of the button, dot on click, I keep on spelling on lick, on click equals a function, parentheses, curly braces. When we click on the button, what are we gonna do? We recently learned about if statements. We will first check the checked property of the subscribe button. We'll place it within an if statement. So to create an if statement, it's if, parentheses, curly braces, we are examining my checkbox, that's the subscribe button, dot checked property. This will evaluate to be true or false. If this is true, we will execute this code. If not, we do something else. If somebody is subscribed, let's change the text content of our sub result paragraph. So sub result, we are accessing the text content to equal, maybe I'll use a template literal. You are subscribed. else the user is not subscribed. Let's copy this line, paste it. You are not subscribed. Let's test this. If I click on the checkbox, then press the submit button, it states that I am subscribed. You are subscribed. If I were to refresh the page, I don't click the subscribe button, press submit, you are not subscribed. All right, we know that that works. Let's move on to the radio buttons. First, we will check to see if somebody selected Visa. We are accessing the Visa radio button. If Visa button dot checked, if this is true, we are changing the text of the payment result paragraph. Payment result dot text content equals you are paying with Visa. Let's see if that works. I'll select Visa, press Submit. You are paying with Visa. All right, let's add else if. The next radio button is MasterCard button. If this is checked, MasterCard button dot checked. Then we will change the text content of the payment result to be you are paying with MasterCard. You are paying with MasterCard. Let's add another else if statement. Else if, this time we are examining the PayPal button. PayPal button dot checked. If this is true, change the text content of the payment result to be you are paying with PayPal. You are paying with PayPal. Else, if none of these radio buttons are checked, we will change the text content of the payment result to be, you must select a payment type. I will press submit without selecting a payment type. You must select a payment type. All right, everybody, so that is the checked property. By examining the checked property of an HTML checkbox or a radio button element, 
we can determine if those elements are checked or not. And well, that is the checked property in JavaScript.